Oh, today we're going to go over kinetics and the rate law and what that means and how it's expressed. So let's jump into our slides here. All right. So you've already seen a sort of how to measure the rate, um, how the concentration of either a reactant or a product changes over time. Um, so now we're going to look at um, what is this rate law? How do we uh, express that specific kinetic relationship? So here we have a really simple basic one. A decomposes to form products. So the rate law is uh, typically expressed um, with regards to any component that affects it, usually the reactants. Um, so we have some rate constant, uh, which now is lowercase k, so don't get that confused with equilibrium constant, which is an uppercase k. The rate constant, just like equilibrium though, is specific to each reaction. Uh, it changes at temperature, um, but otherwise, like it says, it's a constant for that specific reaction. Then we have the concentration of the reactants and this uh, subscript or superscript, sorry, N is the reaction order. What, re, uh, what power is it raised to? How dependent is it on that reaction concentration? Um, is it uh, completely independent of it? Is it linearly related? Is it exponentially related? So what does that N equal to? Zero, one, two, three halves, whatever. So that reaction order is kind of one of the most important parts. It lets us know how much that reactant affects the reaction and how uh, if we alter that concentration, how much faster or slower is the reaction going to proceed? Um, and we refer to that, like it says, as reaction order. So if we have multiple parts in our rate law, let's say we have reactant A and B, they'll each have their own uh, reaction order. So we would say this reaction is, say, zero with order with respect to A and first order with respect to B. The reaction itself will have some overall order of reaction. That's the sum of all those individual reaction orders. So for the, for the one I just gave, if it was zero with for A and first order for B, it'd be zero plus one, it'd be first order overall. Or here we have this rate law with NO2 and O2. It looks like the NO2 is actually supposed to be raised to the second, or the NO is supposed to be raised to the second power. So it's second order with respect to NO, first order with respect to O2, and two plus one is third order, so it's third order overall. Um, so like it says, if the reaction zero order, we're raised to the zero with power. So regardless of how we change the concentration, if our concentration is one molar or 10 molar or 100 molar, if it's raised to the zero with power, it's always one. So anything that's um, to the zero with order is going to be independent of concentration. Altering that concentration is not going to have any effect on the rate of the reaction or how quickly that reaction occurs. If it's first order, it's directly proportional. So if I uh, go from a concentration of one to two, one raised to the first power is one, two raised to the first power is two. If I double the concentration, I double the rate. And if it's second order, then it's exponentially uh, proportional. If I go from a concentration of one to two, one squared is one, two squared is four. So if I double the concentration, I quadruple the rate. Um, if I triple the concentration, I should see the rate go up by a factor of nine and so on and so forth. Um, and just gives us sort of an example here. This first graph on the left shows concentration versus time. So as the reaction's proceeding, you can see if it's zero with order, the concentration goes down linearly. If it's first order, then uh, the concentration is going to start to level out. And if it's second order, we're going to see that um, leveling out occurring much faster because we're raising that or we're essentially using up that reactant twice as quickly. Um, or the rate versus time, we can see if it's zero with order, the rate is unaffected by concentration. If it's first order, the rate is affected linearly. So double the concentration, double the rate. Um, if we look at point two, if our rate is about 0.003, and we double that concentration 0.4, now our rate is 0 0.006. And if it's second order, we're going to get an exponential increase in that rate. Um, so for a particular reaction, which A goes to products, a doubling of the concentration of A causes the reaction rate to double. What is the order of this reaction? So we can even write that out. We can think about that. What did the rate do? The rate uh, doubled, and our concentration doubled 
raised to some power. So what would n have to be in this case? Or here we have rate equals concentration raised to the n. So if one doubles and the other doubles, what's n have to be? n has to equal one in this case. So we could tell in that way that the reaction is first order or should be first order with respect to A. If we can get back into the slides, there we go. Yep, so there's our order with respect to A by knowing what changing the concentration specifically does to the rate. Does doubling it double the rate also or have no effect or quadruple it? So these reaction orders must be determined experimentally. There's no way you can look at a reaction equation and say, oh, the stoichiometry is this, therefore the reaction order is that. It's not like equilibrium. So the only way to know this, the only way to know that it's first order with respect to that reactant or three halves order with respect to that one is to do it experimentally. You've got to set up the reaction and monitor it. How do the concentrations of those reactants change over time? How do the concentrations of the products change over time? If I alter those initial concentrations, if we set up multiple reaction vessels, and I double the concentration of one of the reactants, how do I notice the initial rate changing? So that's going to, what's going to be allow me to determine the order of that. Um, this brings us to these integrated rate laws where we have very specific um, relationships between the concentrations, the rate constant, and the rate. Um, so this will actually, we'll see, you'll have different rate, integrated rate laws for zero order reactions, first order, second order, et cetera that allows us a mathematical relationship from that. So if we know maybe the initial concentration and the final concentration, we can find the rate constant. Or if we know the initial concentration and the rate constant, after some amount of time, we can determine what the concentration after that time should be. Um, so these will look a little scary at first. Um, actually, let's go into the graph first. So the easiest way, quickest way to determine these things experimentally is to get your data, um, monitor the reaction over time, and then plot it. And depending on how we plot these, uh, it will tell us very quickly and immediately whether or not it is first order or isn't first order or it's zero with order. So that's gonna depend on the axes. So if we wanna see if something is a first order uh, reaction or first order with respect to that reactant, we're gonna plot the natural log of the reactant or the concentration of the reactant versus time. And if we get a straight line with a negative slope, that confirms that it is first order. If we didn't get a straight line, if we got some sort of um, curve, all it would tell us is that it is not first order. Well, you could think about the equation of a line, y equals mx plus b. Where's our y? That's our concentration at time zero. If our slope is negative k, that's our m, x, and then b, the b, uh, um, the y-intercept or the, yeah, the initial concentration here. So sorry, so the, the y is our natural log of our concentration, b is our initial concentration, our slope is negative k, our rate constant, and t is time. So this is the integrated rate law for a first order reaction. It relates back to how we would plot this to see if it's a first order reaction. And because we get a straight line, we can use that equation for a straight line, y equals mx plus b. So um, one of the more important things is to remember, what are the axes for these various plots? And if you can remember, a first order plot is the natural log of concentration versus time, you remember what the, the slope is equal to, then you're already really gonna know that integrated rate law. Um, but again, these are also gonna be things that are in your text and you will have access to your text um, for uh, uh, quizzes and exams. Um, the other thing to note is, um, we'll talk about the, the rate constants here in a little bit. So I'm gonna stop here, keep this video short. The next one, we're gonna look at integrated rate laws for second order reactions and zero with order reactions.